There's one guy for Cal we all need to be paying attention to. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. The everydayers know it, but it's a War Rapport Wednesday. Mike G of the War Rapport hanging out with us just a few days out from Auburn hosting Cal. Mike G, we'll talk about the slot position battle between Robert Lewis and Malcolm yeah. Simmons, as well as, hey, where does Sam Jackson, the former Cal quarterback, fit into this offensive game plan this weekend against his former team? But just watching tape of Cal, there's one guy to me that does stand out. That says, okay, if I'm Auburn, we've got to circle this guy. And it's their edge guy. Some places list him as a, an outside linebacker, Mike G. Mm -hmm. Some places list him as an edge or a DN, but Ryan McCulloch, uh, he's he he wears number forty three. He lines up on uh, both right outside linebacker and on the left side of the field as well. But by far their best pass rusher against UC Davis, and I can't wait to see him go up against Xavion Miller and Tyler Johnson. Assuming Tyler Johnson's at left tackle this Saturday, uh, to me that's the matchup to watch here. It is, and he was their highest graded uh, 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 end guy. Uh, you know, against UC Davis. Sure. So he played a total of 44 snaps uh, on Saturday, and he logged four hurries and two hits as well. Zach. On 26 pass rushes. I mean, that's yeah, pretty good. They're pretty good. Now, yeah. <laughs> interesting stat uh, against UC Davis, uh, because I, I went to all the Cal uh, fan sites and blogs, and most of their writers were really down on the win. I mean, they were not very enthusiastic about, you know, how they performed defensively. I don't Reset. blame them. Free said during his press conference, it's not a secret what they're going to try to do, Zach. They're going to try to force Peyton to throw the ball, even though we felt we feel like he did great on Saturday. The rest of college football is not convinced that he's going to be an effective passer, so look for Cal yeah. to try to do that. Well, one interesting stat I have here on the Cal defense, which includes Ryan McCullough, they did not log a single sack versus UC Davis. Nobody got to the quarterback versus UC Davis. Is that true? I thought they had three for some reason. Yeah, I'm looking right here and, and at their defensive grades, and they're, they're logging zero sacks for anybody on defense. That's a big deal. Yeah, that's a big deal because if they're gonna beat, if they're gonna beat Auburn, they've got to do that. Like they've got to figure out a way to get to the quarterback. And to me, that comes down to okay, can these tackles limit Ryan McCulloch? And then their other guys is Xavier Carlton. He's more of a defensive yeah. end. He's more of their Keldrick Falk, I guess, six six two seventy five. Great frame. He played more snaps than McCulloch did on Saturday. He yeah, and, and he's better against the run, I think, than McCulloch is. So I mean, yeah. that that makes sense. That makes sense. But yeah, to me, it's it's going to be limiting those guys. Um, and and I'm not sure. I'm not sure they're going to be able to do that on a consistent basis. I do think they'll get their wins. Mm -hmm. But to me, I think it's going to be all about. Um, wow, they didn't get a sack. That's they didn't insane. get a single sack. Yeah, right uh, against UC Davis. I'm telling you, Zach. And when UC go, Davis got one for what that's worth. So. Yeah. So when you go to the Cal sites, they were not very encouraged by this performance by this Cal defense, uh, even though they won. And you know, on the offensive side of it, you know, we're talking about the tackles that they'll be going up against. Um, you know, Hugh Freeze talked about that trying to find a home for Percy Lewis and Tyler Johnson and Dylan Wade and the shuffle that they were doing. I asked him about that again on Monday. Like, hey, you know, you you're, you talk about it. You don't care who goes out and starts. He doesn't care who goes out there first. But that's not true at offensive line. He definitely cares who goes out there first at offensive line and yeah. where they're playing at. So uh, I'll be interested to see, you know, what they see on tape in terms of, okay, who's better where? against these defensive ends, and, and, and if they're going to be able to stop them. Peyton Thorne with time is going to be very dangerous this year, I'm telling you. Sure. They yeah. kept them clean 95% of the time, and if these tackles can protect his blind side and give him the confidence to stand back there in the pocket, I think he's going to be really dangerous on Saturday. Yeah, and Peyton had so much time, but he didn't really need it in most of the situations. I mean, most of the time sure. it was, uh, all right, take his drop and then let it loose. A lot of it was RPO stuff where you throw it very quickly. And then there were times when the, when the deep pass, I think it was the deep pass. I don't know if it was to, to Keandre Lambert-Smith or to Perry. I think it would have been KLS. Mm -hmm. Like, 
the the interior had a wall. He was able to step up into the pocket and and sling it in there. And so to me, yeah, th- this is the battle here. I mean, if Cal's going to pull off the upset, they need a game out of Ryan McCulloch and Xavier Carlton, their edge guys. And yeah. to me, I just, I like Auburn's part of the matchup. And you talked about the, the rotation on the offensive line, specifically the left side with D Wade and Tyler Johnson and, and, and Percy Lewis. You can say that at pressers all you want. You can say yep. it on Tiger Talk all you want. But Tyler Johnson was a starter and played significantly more snaps than Percy Lewis. Exactly. Dylan Wade stayed at guard the entire game. So to me, this isn't a rotation of three. It's a rotation of two. And right now, it seems like Tyler Johnson mm-hmm. is beating out Percy Lewis clearly for that left tackle job. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, uh, other notes from Saturday that I think that will play in this coming Saturday. Uh, the offensive line did not log a single penalty. No penalties against Auburn's offensive line on Saturday. So they're going to want to play a clean game here. And, uh, you know, as it stacks up right now, I'm looking for them uh, <laughs> to continue that trend because looking at Cal's defense, I, I, there's nothing there that's, that's very daunting, Zach. I think that this is a team that Auburn should handle, and if they don't, it'll be really disappointing. So I'm looking for the offensive line to have a really strong performance versus these ends. Yeah, and I think if Auburn doesn't have a good performance against Cal's defense, I do think it'll be a specific matchup or two or a player or two for Auburn that didn't do enough, whether that's yeah. Peyton not you know taking care of the football or – one of these edge rushers that we're talking about maybe beating Auburn's tackles. Mm-hmm. Like, I think there will be a specific situation where we're like, yeah, Auburn would have been fine if it wasn't for this. And I think it will be very clear. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be very clear. Uh, so th- this will be, this will be, an, this will be probably one of the key matchups that nobody will be watching. You and I will be watching. But as the season goes along, Auburn's got to solidify. Like, what is this offensive line going to look like? Are they going to be able to hold up under real pressure? I'm not sure Cal's going to be able to provide the test that this O-line needs, that these tackles need this Saturday. But, you know, we'll see what Cal's defensive coordinator cooks up. You know, Hugh's not ignoring this. He's not overlooking this. Uh, no. But, yeah, I'm still – of all the position groups on this team, uh, offensive line is still the one that I most worry about going into projecting into the rest of the season. Well, and you got to think the game plan is going to be solid. I mean, they said this publicly that the week before the first game week, they said they were going to spend a few days looking at Cal, looking ahead at Cal before yeah. Alabama A&M. So, I mean, they've gotten a head start. Cal probably did the same thing with UC Davis. Like, let's just be honest here. But to me, like I, I like Auburn's coaching staff and their ability to prepare more than, yeah, more than really Cal's. Good. And so we'll we'll see exactly what that um what that looks like. It's like when he was asked about Sam Jackson. He's like, "You're gonna go to Sam Jackson and ask about what they're doing on defense." He's like, "No, I think our guys have got it." But you know, <laughs> I think our guys got it. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, hey, you've got a spy in the room. You got you've got a double agent. Are you gonna use him? And uh, yeah, the, I, the the preparation by this staff is it, it it leaves me with a lot of confidence. Um, now. In our one-on-one interviews with both Hugh Freeze and Peyton Thorne, Thorne said it to me first, right, uh, over at Vintage, Zach. He said, you know, look, man, it feels different this year. They have it together. Um, yeah. uh, he made some even more pointed uh, uh, comments to me off camera, which were, which is what was driving my change in, in, in tone about Peyton Thorne. I said, man, I think we all owe Peyton an apology after what he told me. I was like, man, we were a little hard on you. You you had a lot to overcome last year. And then when we talked to Freeze, he said, I have not talked to Peyton about this, but I feel like he feels we have it more together as a staff and that we've done this before and that the plan is going to be good. So that confidence in each other, I think, is going to help. And then when we're talking about these tackles, if Peyton Thorne feels confidence and he's pulling the trigger and they can get that time to throw down, it's going to help cover the sins of these offensive linemen a little bit more, man. When the quarterback doesn't hold on to the ball, especially in the pass rush, it it helps them quite a bit. So we'll see if they help them out there a little bit uh, in that quick passing game. Yeah, yeah, and all this talk about you know the the merry-go-round at left tackle, even though I, I, the way it's being talked about versus what we actually saw on the field Saturday, yeah. I just don't think it's the same thing. Like I think Tyler Johnson's the starter there, but okay, we'll see, we'll see. What they say and what they do are two different things. Um, but Xavier Miller's performance, I think, is just kind of flown under the radar. Like he is solid. He has been yeah. so so solid. So I just wanted to give him a quick 
nod. How does Sam Jackson fit into what happens this Saturday? The former Cal quarterback now taking on his former team. Let's jump into that as well as what's happening at Auburn slot position battle with Robert Lewis and Malcolm mm -hmm. Simmons. That's coming up right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. Mike G, can you imagine needing a part for your car, truck, SUV, Tesla, and, and not going to eBay Motors? I cannot imagine not going to eBay Motors because I've gone to eBay Motors for my Tesla. Wow. <laughs> I wow. bought things for my Tesla on eBay Motors. With 122 million parts for your uh, for your car, truck, SUV, th mm. they've got it. I promise you they've got it, especially for older models. I mean, it's mm. certainly the way to go because the, the, the brick and mortar stores, they're not going to have it. They're not going to be able to have all of that stuff. So with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. See what they did there. Keep your ride or die alive <laughs> at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to you as customers. Today's show also brought to you by America's number one sportsbook. Mike G, can you imagine wagering anywhere other than our friends at FanDuel? I can't. I can't. I had oh. the most epic parlay of all time on FanDuel. It was epic. There's a lot. It, I, <laughs> I'll say that any parlay on FanDuel is epic. Mm. 13 and a half. Auburn minus 13 and a half. Where are you going? I'm picking Auburn to cover. Me too. Me picking too. Auburn to cover. And you Easily. can uh, as well. And look, uh, they've got something a little different for folks right now. Through the 22nd of September, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. So just bet 5 bucks for Auburn to cover, and a lot of good things come your way. Just visit FanDuel.com uh, to download America's number one sports book. Thank you to FanDuel. <laughs> Mike G of the War of War. Zach, can, can I say this really quickly? Because uh, FanDuel is an ex excellent sponsor. Uh, two years ago, I put together a nine-leg um, Golden State Warriors parlay. Okay. And it was nine legs, and I used $300 of like uh, bonus money FanDuel gave me. I came up one leg. All eight legs hit, and the last leg was Draymond Green over seven and a half points. He scored six points and fouled out in the fourth quarter. The payout was twenty two thousand dollars. You didn't take the payout? No, no, no. Like it was, I needed to hit that last leg to win twenty two thousand oh, okay. dollars. Sometimes and, they like offer you something to. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I've hated Draymond Green ever since. Uh, I would too. <laughs> it's my dude. I don't blame favorite you. That's player. devastating. It's like I almost come on. tweeted at him and like, hey, bro, hook me up. Yeah, that's right. I'm sure that would have really impacted him, for sure. <laughs> uh, all right, so Sam Jackson, obviously coming from Cal. This is one of my favorite aspects of the transfer portal mm -hmm. is you're getting guys playing their former team the next year. Uh, you see it in the NFL all the time. Now you're starting to see it in college football all the time. And this one's obviously out of conference, so it's a little bit unique. But do you think, do you think they draw up stuff specifically for Sam Jackson? We saw them kind of admit to like wanting the freeze four to score a uh, little fan service in week one. Yeah. You, you could do that against Alabama a and I don't know if you could do that against Cal, but what do you think? Do you think there's going to be any fan service or I guess player service to, to Sam Jackson to draw him <laughs> something up in the red zone on Saturday? I'm going to go back to something you said about just a second ago about there's what they say and then there's what they do. <laughs> right. And all spring we heard about Sam Jackson and uh, the truth was against an FCS opponent. We didn't see him until the second half. Yeah, of that game of that game. Um, look, uh, Freeze has talked about a free rotation at wide receiver. Um, but I do think there is a chance they draw for something for Sam Jackson um, because he can throw the ball. And if they decide that they want to get tricky, uh, they can do that. Nothing that they would maybe run in a big time po power five game, but just something to, you know, reward these kids for all the hard work for all intents and purposes sam jackson has been a great teammate he's been a hard worker you know and freeze has shown a propensity to want to reward guys who have bought into the system and have done all the right things as far as i know that's sam jackson so uh now as far as whether he's maybe earned that or not like look he he played well and, and probably had one of the more impressive catches on the day on like kind of undercutting that like home run ball that hank brown yeah. put up there yeah, yeah that maybe was that's right. Yeah, the the shot of the recruits in the backgrounds that going nuts after that catch was was thing of lore. Awesome. Yeah, it's it was everything awesome. you want. It's everything yeah. you want. Uh, yeah, but you're right. Sam Jackson played six snaps. 
on, six on, snaps on offense. Yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Freeze can talk about a free rotation all he wants. You know, that doesn't mean nothing. And uh, now he did say to me during the press conference that uh, Malcolm Simmons started because they were running a specific play. Mm -hmm. But it's not meaningless that they chose to run a play for him to start the game as a true freshman. So there was some speculation that uh, Robert Lewis was dealing with a hamstring injury or something. Uh, Freeze didn't say anything about Robert Lewis injury uh, when asked about Robert Lewis. Uh, and, and I think that Malcolm Simmons went out there and earned, me, who, you know, I do believe him when he says he doesn't care who goes out there first, but he does care who plays Especially the most snaps. I agree yeah. with that. Well, they yeah. both played 15. They both played 15 snaps, Simmons and Lewis, which is He wild. only played 15 snaps? Wow. Simmons? Okay. Yeah. Wow. It felt like he played way more than that. I'm confirming. Yeah, they both played 15. That's crazy. On okay. offense. He may have played more on special teams. I don't have that pulled up. But yeah, yeah to me, I think, um, I mean, it, it, I mean, Simmons was so explosive. I don't know how you keep him off the field. Now, like mentally, like, d does he have everything like grasped? Because yeah. I mean, he's a true freshman. He's been here five minutes. Like they talked about missed assignments from from the young receivers. That was right. a theme throughout the week. It was like, yeah. hey, missed assignments here are killing these some of these young guys. So, like, would it shock me if you saw him more early in the game when like there was a still a script in play, and then yeah. later in the game you saw more Robert Lewis? Like that would not shock me. Um, the fact that there's options and both of them are very very exciting and explosive in different ways. Like that's yeah. obviously exciting. I don't think. I don't think the Robert Lewis um, slot receiver run or Auburn's primary slot receiver run, I don't think it's over. But okay. I don't think you can keep Malcolm Simmons off the field. Yeah. And, and are there enough targets to go around where both of them are like tremendous parts of the offense? I don't I don't know. We got to see it. Every year, the Auburn football Twitter gives this away. Oh, every single year. So. Uh, everyone hates when I bring up this name, but you and I were talking about Jay Fair. We had a segment a while ago, and I was just like, yeah, I think you know he's going to start. And they put out this Jay Fair's electric graphic. And then during this, uh, one of the uh, one-on-ones in fall camp that we had with Kay and Lee, I, I asked him, I said, give us a you know some receivers to watch here in fall camp. And Kay and said, Perry Thompson and Malcolm Simmons are making plays. They're all over the place. And then the next thing I know, Auburn football's Twitter is putting up the video. How they took my tweet and they put it on a graphic and they put highlights of these guys just making crazy catches in practice. And, you know, I, I you know, I, I agree. I said that to say this about what you said about Malcolm Simmons. I don't think you can keep him off the field. I think, you know, uh, you know, Perry and Cam got a lot of the attention and deservedly so. But Malcolm Simmons is one of the jewels of this class and maybe even a little underrated in recruiting. Um, you know, he was he was no a top question. he's a top 100 guy, man, I'm telling you. So, it was it was exciting to see recruiting pay off immediately for Hugh Freeze. Yeah. here particularly in the passing game now we know at other positions they're a little bit more developmental like they went and got deandre carter out of california number one ot is he ready this year probably not will no. he be ready in a year maybe right um but at wide receiver you can come in and make an impact immediately That's so right. uh you know robert lewis to me was their insurance policy right if these young guys take a little bit more time to come along. We have a guy who's played a lot of college football and will go out and do most things average to above average. And he'll be a solid player and he'll catch, you know, he'll have a high catch rate and he won't drop the ball. Uh, but then you get surprised and you, this is what, this is the era that Hugh Freeze is bringing into Auburn. I'm telling you, Zach, that Auburn fans have to get used to. Yeah. You have to get used to the idea that you are loaded with talent. <laughs> and sometimes the best guy may sit, sit on the bench, but the level of play doesn't drop off at all from one to two on the depth chart. That's what Auburn's building at receiver. Well, I also think they're comfortable playing the best guy, and I don't know if that's always been the case at all. Yeah. Look look at what's happening at left tackle. I mean, Percy Lewis, I'm assuming like he wasn't cheap from an NIL standpoint. He was yeah. one of the top tackles in, in the portal, and they're probably starting a redshirt freshman for the remainder of the season in yeah. Tyler Johnson. So to me, like I, I, I'm guessing that wasn't an easy decision sure. for them. In fact, we know it wasn't. He talked about it for weeks. So to me, I think that's something Auburn fans should be excited about. Like true competition yeah. is at Auburn at multiple 
position. I mean, we saw it at quarterback for you know the the QB two spot between yeah. Hank and and Holden, and and obviously you know that that lasted the entirety of fall camp. So it's a it's a fun time. The Hugh Freeze era at Auburn is going to end up being a, a super super fun time. Freeze My, said that the tape has to become the resume, and mm-hmm. I think on Saturday some guys started to build their resume on tape. Um, and uh, they've been doing it at fall in practice because, it, you know, that tape counts as well, too. Um, yep. And uh, uh, that's what you're going to see. These battles start to flesh out here uh, before they hit SEC play. And then by the time they get to Arkansas, they're going to have a more solid idea of who their core guys are at every position. I just think they're so deep at wide receiver that you're not going to have to think about that as much. <laughs> right. Just call the plays for the guys who are going to make the plays. And, yeah. uh, you know, like they've got a ton of guys that can do that. I'm happy for Sam Jackson making that catch, though. I think, you know, you make the decision to transfer Zach and you come across the country and you move your life. And, um, you know, there were probably some commitments made to him. And the, although he didn't play a ton, uh, he made a play when given a chance. And I think that that should earn him some more trust with this coaching staff. No question. I mean, that was an impressive catch. The body control, the intuition, all of it. So, uh, Mike G, how can people check out everything you've got going on? Uh, go over to the War Report and subscribe. Uh, we got lots of great film review stuff behind the paywall there for our subscribers. We're also doing a lot of national personality interviews. So uh, I just aired one with Heather Dinich. Brandon Marcello will be joining me later this week. And our guy, Charlie Five, every Monday, him and I Ooh. are breaking down what Freeze has to say at his press conference. So please go subscribe. Uh, you know, uh, uh, follow us on social media at the warp or every social media platform. Yeah. Yeah. And check out all of uh, my stuff at the barn, auburn.com. Please like the video. Please subscribe. We'll see you next time. This has been locked on Auburn.